But first, how many of you out there are 100 years old? More than you might think. National statistics say there are 14,000 centenarians in the UK. And that's enough to fill the Birmingham arena. Wow. Yeah, although presumably they need a lot more toilets. The latest addition to that exclusive 100 Club received her telegram from the Queen this very morning. And as her granddaughter writes, she's a big fan of this show. Oh, here's what she wrote. 20 seconds. Where's my fucking water? I made it very clear I need a glass of water after exercise or else white saliva forms at the corners of my mouth. Well, whose is this? That's mine now. Careful, it's fizzy. What? And I'm delighted to say Rose Haig joins us on the line now. Rose, are you there, my love? Well, of course I'm here. Where else would I be? Rose, many congratulations. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> congratulations. <coughs> Hello? <coughs> There we go. Rose, can you tell us where... No, leave it here. Here. Because if you leave it there, I can't reach it, you stupid girl. Rose, I believe your father was a, a captain now, stationed course, in the I army. I grew up in the Raj, 1930s. Yes. Mm. It's perfectly pleasant. Uh, one can be rather misty-eyed. Uh, uh, of course, the hangover was rather botched. Mountbatten did what he could. Poor old Dickie, Ratchet. That's lovely. I was just so wondering, wondering about uh, the secret to your old age. I'm talking, young man. Right. You normally interrupt people when they're speaking. I've been called a young man for quite some time. Stop I'm... mumbling. Why are you staring at me? What's your name? I'm a portrait. The point being, we had a houseboy. Not a friend, you understand, an right. employee. Okay. He used to run errands, <laughs> and we called him Brownie. Right. Not the sharpest of fellows, but curiously, he was not an Indian. Okay. He was a Negro. And they are very different, because uh, whilst physically stronger, they... Yeah. Oh. Oh dear, uh, we seem right. oh we seem to yeah. be we seem to have lost Rose there. But yes, a great achievement and a colourful character. Different times, different times, and uh, apologies there for the wind and the racism. And here is the woman herself to tell us more about her new series that shines a light on women in science. It's writer and broadcaster Dee Gilhooley. Uh, just to clarify, by the way, some viewers may mistakenly think that your second name is Hooley and your first name is Deagle. In actual fact, your second name is Gil Hooley, your first name is Dee. That's a full name, not an initial. Yeah. Welcome. Wicked to be here. Cool. So you're perhaps best known as one of the regulars on Radio 4's Woman's Hour. Which, by the way, guys, well worth a listen. Oh, I wouldn't have had you down as a fan, Alan. Well, it's, an, it's a curious story. I was actually uh, stuck in traffic and Classic FM were playing music from an advert which I dislike. So I found myself listening to Woman's Hour and I thought, this is actually good. <laughs> tell your friends. I did. I told ten men and they will tell ten men and they will tell ten men to tell ten men to tell ten men. It sounds like the kind of song you'd sing on a coach trip, but it's actually true. Now, your radio series focuses on trailblazers and groundbreakers in the field of science. Bang on, yeah. It's a chance for some brilliant, lesser-known women to have their stories told, you know what I mean? So, uh, with all due respect to your Ada Lovelaces or Rosalind Franklins, we're going to be looking at women under the bonnet, as it were, um, the fuel in the turbocharger. Because there's some fascinating women here. We're talking Vera Rubin, Nettie Stevens, yeah. Cecilia Payne. I mean, brilliant women. Oh, kick-ass women. Yeah, Cecilia Payne's actually is an amazing story. A British astronomer got her doctorate at 25. Boom. <laughs> and she wrote a paper on the composition of the stars, but was persuaded not to publish it by her colleague, Henry Norris Russell. Years later, her findings were published and credited to, you've guessed it. Henry Norris Russell. Bingo. Are you still with us, Alan? The, yeah. So I'm sorry to... Actually, it makes me physically sick to say this, but I was miles away. Which shows this is a real problem within men, isn't it? Um, what I will say, the 
purposes of clarification is um, you don't put fuel in the turbocharger. It's a small turbine housed within the exhaust that utilizes excess gases, loops them back round, increases power output. So small capacity engine, big hike in power, very efficient. That was told to me by an engineer in oily overalls called Karen. Woman. Fair play. Yeah. <laughs> well, because women in jobs like that have to put up with their fair share of jeering, you know, even now in 2018, and they just have to accept it. If I can just speak as a male, I, I'm sorry, I have sinned. I've stood on the pavement with other men and slow hand clapped as I watched a woman try to parallel park. And that's wrong. And I think if I saw the same thing happen today, I would just, you know, shout out instructions. Or just leave her alone. Yeah, I'd shout out instructions or just leave her alone. I'd ask her which she prefers. Or just leave her alone. Or just leave her alone. Yeah. These issues need to be aired by women. We're still seeing powerful men harassing women when all they want to do is do their jobs and be left alone. Hey, Amen. <laughs> hey, women. I mean, I, I, I feel you. I feel you. I don't, I don't I mean I feel you. I wouldn't do that unless I was your, your doctor or your boyfriend. But I totally identify with what you're saying. Well, I, I think the Me Too's a woman thing, yeah, really, exactly. isn't it? I mean, I'm not sure yeah. it's that helpful for a man to presume <laughs> to know what that's like, to be honest, but anyway. Of course it is. Yes. It, you know, if men actually listened to what women were saying on mm. harassment, then they'd shut up and listen, <laughs> but they don't. You know, so we're still seeing the same things time... I've been sexually harassed. I'm sorry, I wasn't aware oh, It's not quite the same thing that women have been through, but uh, it is a bit. We are so, with several O's, excited to be here with fashionista extraordinaire Tommy Chaucer. Tommy. Hi, and excited is right, because today is all about the skirt. After two years of heavy tailoring with all manners of trouser, baby, the skirt is back. OK. So, cop a feel of these. Oh. Now, our first oh. skirt is right. a circle skirt modelled right. by the beautiful Kirsty. Hello. Just £65. She can't be. Oh, you mean the price. Oh. And it's a skirt that's an expression of joy. It's summertime, it's good times, it's light, it's airy, and mm. it's fun. It's a happy skirt, yes. isn't it? Yeah. It's very elated. It's over the moon. It is. It's, it's, well, it's chuffed a bit. You can't wipe the smile off its no. face. It's billowy. Like a windsock. Like a, like a windsock. It... Or like a tent. Yes. Or, uh, a marquee. marquee. Like, a, marquee, like maybe? a wedding, big wedding marquee that's not been moored properly. That's right. Uh, and, and you can see exactly what the skirt does for Kirsty's posture. The way she walks, the way she holds herself. And wow, Kirsty owns it. Really? Oh, well, thank you for bringing it in, Kirsty. I mean, she makes it work mm. for her. Oh, totally, yeah. I mean, Simon. Yes. Say something. It's got a beautiful silhouette. Yes, I mean, yes. It's a, it is a great shape. It really is. Um, I would also add that it's uh, comfortable, modest, and good for Sunday best. Useless. And it's got uh, two poppers, so you can adjust it if you do change in size or once a month, possibly. Because when a woman enters the menstrual stage of a feminine cycle, she will swell around the tummy. So let's bring oh. out our next gorgeous girl. Julia! Julia! Now, this is a Durndell skirt. Now, this I love. It's shaped like a bell, concentrated around the waist, around the hips, and this one is very on trend. It is like a stripy bell with her legs as the hammer. Feel the fabric, Simon, then talk about it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Have a oh. feel. <laughs> feel the fabric. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Decent. Yeah? yeah, exactly, and it's it's decent a decent bit of skirt. <laughs> so no, sorry, I take that back. Well, it's saying the Dolce Vita, Roman Holiday. It is. It's saying molto bene, molto bene, molto bene. Molto bene. <laughs> Not okay, that loud, you but you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's no getting away from it, Tommy. Sometimes Simon and I can be outrageous, really can. Let's look at another woman in a skirt. Our next skirt is modelled by the lovely Louisa. Oh, very curvy stripes, like she's been squeezed out of a giant tube of uh, Colgate lady paste. <laughs> and we've paired the skirt with daring red shoes that really draw the eye. And it says, I'm on the town, it says, I mean business. It says, I'm comfortable, but I'm nobody's fool. Yeah, it's saying, I'm a whirling dervish. Yes, I like to go to the office, but sometimes I like to sit on a park bench with Rivita and Philadelphia looking sad. But it's also saying, I'm happy. I like to leap in the air and sing, whoa, body form. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. It never bloody shuts up, this yeah, skirt. Well, it, 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 it is a stripy <laughs> chatterbox. It is good. It's a magnificent skirt. Tommy, join me at the lady. 
I think this, this look works for Julia, but I can also see her, perhaps with her hair up... Totally. Uh, Excuse like me, my this. darling. Thank you, darling. Um, maybe a shocking pink clutch bag, sleeves pushed up, L.A. law style. Um, totally. Hair up, daytime casual, mm -hmm. hair down, one word, accessorise. Wrist, neck, ears. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. No. Nails, lots of colour. Accessories where you can really let your hair down. Yeah, although I've just told you to put it up <laughs> to me. She's smiling. Earrings, maybe a couple of big hoops. Just toss your head back and shake it around. Let them clank against your neck. <laughs> Thanks, Louisa. Thanks, sweetheart. That was sensational.